Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we have just seen the definitions of stereoselective and stereospecific reactions and asymmetric synthesis. Okay. And uh, in true sense, they are all different, but in, in reality, what happens? The stereoselectivity is now uh, most uh, often clubbed with asymmetric synthesis. So, if, a, if an asymmetric synthesis, the, the actual asymmetric synthesis definition that whenever a a chiral center is converted into a chiral center and if you get one configuration in excess over the other that is asymmetric synthesis. Many many uh, scientists call it that it is a stereoselective synthesis that you are making one stereoisomer more over the other. Okay. Uh, now, I will just show you a few slides to, to impress upon you that again uh, upon the importance of this asymmetric synthesis and the definitions are also included here. See what uh, you should know that most of the naturally occurring compounds that we see in our daily life, most of the naturally occurring or biologically active organic compounds, they contain chiral centers and nature makes it this makes creates this chiral centers only in one configuration with a defined geometry. Uh, and the question is that means, nature has the ability to make compounds or to make asymmetric synthesis of highest order. So, whenever we take say get menthol or uh, drugs, uh, drugs like antimalarial dyes like quinine, uh, quinine, synchonine, whatever compound you call if uh, they are mostly chiral and if it is chiral that is obtained in one enantiomeric form and that is the beauty of nature. And you have to um, asymmetric synthesis this is I, I have given you the definition that a chiral, a chiral unit is converted into a chiral unit. So, that is one textbook definition, but uh, I gave you that one chiral center I have, I have defined this unit as a chiral center. And uh, convert a chiral center converted to a chiral center in unequal amounts uh, that is called an asymmetric synthesis. Now, asymmetric synthesis why is important? I again uh, quote some examples that there are molecules which are artificially artificially made like this compound. This is these are called the sex pheromones means they can attract uh, attract um, the counter the, the opposite partner, but when you take the mirror image of this molecule this attract males and this attracts females. So, only there is a difference in the stereochemistry this is the mirror image of this one. So, one enantiomer if it is present in the body then the that then the males feel an affinity towards uh, towards the uh, towards the animal which is secreting this type of compound. On the other hand females have the affinity uh, this uh, affinity if, if someone if some animal is secreting this molecule. So, you see the just a difference in stereochemistry can have different biological activity can discriminate between uh, two uh, opposite uh, people male and female. Similarly, uh, there was one drug this is a man made drug thalidomide. Uh, this name was thalidomide and uh, the structure is shown here. This was sold in the 1960s as a plus minus mixture that means as a racemic mixture and it was given to uh, it was given to uh, pregnant mothers. Okay. The pregnant mothers who are li likely to have child uh, very soon. So, those uh, that was now what happened this was given as DL mixture at that time drugs were all given as racemic mixture unless they are naturally occurring because natural products are all chiral. So, the synthetic drugs 
were usually made in the laboratory they are all prepared in the DL form right? because DL form is the easier ones to make. If you want to make it in the in the optically pure form then you have to do an asymmetric synthesis and asymmetric synthesis will cost you more because your design has to be more subtle and more uh, chemically intensive. So, the cost was higher if you want to have only optically pure of this or that. So, the drug companies just to cut down their cost they were introducing the DL pair thinking that they will have the similar kind of effect in the body. But the what happened thalidomide was made uh, was meant to have a sedative action uh, for morning sick sickness which is the usually the pregnant women suffers. But what happened this is the molecule uh, which uh, this with this configuration that has the sedative effect the other compound the mirror image has the causes fetal defects that means it is called a teratogenic compound which causes birth defects. Eh? And what happened the babies that were formed from mothers who were taking this thalidomide the babies were born with deformed limbs deformed legs and this is one of the greatest tragedy in human history that uh, and that brought us to the importance of chirality. Uh, importance of chirality in pharmaceutical industry. I told you in the beginning that chirality is very important in pharmaceutical industry and this was the turning moment in the history of uh, drug industry when drug industries realized that in order to uh, sell a drug you have to have a uh, you have to first know what the effects of the plus compound and what are what are the effects of the minus compound. Uh, it may so happen that the plus compound is the one which is giving the required effect and the minus compound is toxic then you have to give the drug as a chiral drug. There are many examples today of chiral drugs like uh, anti ulcer drugs S omeprazole like the anti Parkinson drug that is called L dopa uh, like levocetrizine is another one an anti allergic drug. So, there are many such drugs. Huh? Uh, many such drugs which are now sold as only the uh, in one in the actual active chiral form. So, asymmetric synthesis has become a, a very important area in pharmaceutical industry who are making drugs. Okay. So, as I said that if you have a if you have a ketone where there is a methyl and a phenyl I gave you an example of ethyl and methyl if you reduce with sodium borohydride you get both R and S because the transition states leading to the IS compound or the transition state leading to the R compound they have the same energy and so the activation energy for the two processes are same. So, they will be formed in the similar rate and ultimately it will be a 50 50 mixture. So, this is a symmetric synthesis not asymmetric synthesis. On the other hand if you have an aldehyde if you have the same ketone phenyl methyl ketone or acetophenone that is commonly known as and if your reducing agent is not chiral is, is not borohydride is a chiral hydride source that means, it is a boron which was attached to attached to a chiral group here. So, maybe all the hydrogens are not present maybe because you need only one hydrogen of the boron to reduce the carbonyl to the alcohol. So, maybe you have one boron boron or boron connected to one hydrogen and the other groups are basically chiral groups and in only one chiral configuration if that is those are called chiral boron uh, reducing agents. So, if you use that compound chiral boron reducing agents then what happens the transition states because in the transition states it is the it is the complex the boron is complex to the carbon. So, that complex will immediately make uh, a chiral uh, will will involve chirality make the molecules chiral okay. and then when the hydrogen comes and produces a new chiral center they are formed in unequal amounts. Okay. So, actual result is uh, when it is used in uh, it is not said which chiral boron agent is used, but a chiral hydride these are hydride transfer agents chiral hydride transfer agent is used and you can get these two alcohols in unequal amounts. So, the experiment that was done here was that S compound was obtained in 97.5 percent and 2.5 percent is the R compound. So, 
now you know what is enantiomeric excess the enantiomeric excess will be 95 it is the difference between the two okay enantiomeric excess again i repeat it is the enantiomer percentage of enantiomer in excess of the racemic counterpart okay so this is the start of the asymmetric reaction okay i have already told you about the selective uh, synthesis now in asymmetric synthesis um, there are again two terms one is enantio selective reaction and the other is diastereo selective reactions okay so if your product suppose the products that are obtained possible products c and d are are linked by uh, the enantiomerism that means c is the mirror image of d and if you get only c then that reaction will be enantio selective because you are getting one enantiomer over the other if it happens to be that c and d are not mirror images are not mirror images they are diastereomers and you get only one in major amount suppose c is in major amount then that will be called a diastereo selective reaction okay so depending upon the relationship of the products you can call them as enantio specific or diastereo specific or diastereo selective or enantio sometimes specific is also called but the better term is because specificity is reserved for the uh, configuration of the starting material. So, it is better that you use this enantio selective and diastereo selective. So, here this is a diastereo selective reaction if you get one diastereomer over the other and if you get one enantiomer one enantiomer in excess over the other then that will be called enantio specific. Okay. Now, remember when we started with the carbonyl chemistry I said that if you take a flat carbonyl with two adjacent hands and none of the hands are chiral then what happens the nucleophile which is also suppose not chiral when it comes then it uh, generates transition states which are enantiomeric in nature and that is why the rates of formation of both R and S compound will be same and you get 1 is to 1 mixture. However, suppose a molecule already has a group which is chiral which has got a chiral center in one particular configuration if you can get it and suppose this is another group R. So, now this molecule is is not chiral here, but overall it is a chiral molecule because it has got a chiral center somewhere in L okay. and suppose this chiral center whatever is present in L is having an S configuration I think better make it uh, another group say X in S configuration okay. and you now add the nucleophile. Okay. So, the nucleophile will add the nucleophile will add to it this is one possibility I am not drawing the three dimensional structure just a rough sketch. So, this is one possibility and the other is the nucleophile on this side and which on the other side okay. x and l star remains. Okay. Now, suppose now this is still s this is still s because you have not touched the chiral center of l what you have done is you have created a new chiral center. Okay, you have created a new chiral center now there is a possibility that they will have configuration suppose the sequence I did not know what is the nucleophile, but suppose we have a sequence order here such that this becomes R. So, then this has to be S okay, if this is R then this is S I am not giving any priority order suppose this becomes R the priorities are such that this carbon becomes R then this carbon will become S. Okay. So, what is the the two products the two products are S S and is a uh, sorry S R and S S what is the relationship between these two products the relationship between these two products are diastereomers okay. and that implies that this is going into the two products 
the R s or the S s because these are diastereomers. So, these two will be also diastereomers because the transition states if you take the mirror image of this transition state to the and the other transition state a mirror image of one transition state and try to compare with the other transition state it is not possible because you have one configuration which is always s. So, taking the mirror image of one uh, one in transition state you have to make this r, but that is not possible because this is fixed s. Yes. So, the transition states now you have will be diastereomeric that is why I gave different heights. Why these are diastereomeric? Because you have already a prefixed predefined configuration for which you do not have any mirror image in these transition states. This transition state always have this s l, l as the s and then if I write it this way that this will be s and if the configuration uh, that is being generated is is r then this will be s r and this will be s s, but this is relationship is diastereomeric. So, the principle of asymmetric synthesis as I told told you earlier that you have to go through diastereomeric transition state. So, if you go through that diastereomeric transition state you will get uh, selectivity or you, you will get the asymmetric asymmetry that you desire. Okay. So, asymmetry can be obtained in various ways one is the molecule already having a chiral center that is one way. The other is that you use the reagent which is chiral then also because in the transition state the nucleophile is involved and if the nucleophile has a particular configuration. So, then the configuration is fixed you cannot have the enantiomeric mirror image then you have to have diastereomeric diastereomeric mirror image. Okay. So, the other possibility is the nucleophile can be chiral there is a third possibility that there are if it is a catalytic reaction some reactions are can be catalyzed then the catalytic catalyst the catalyst can be chiral that what happens in biological system that why natural products are chiral while why all natural products uh, nature makes are chiral because nature uses enzyme which are chiral which are chiral catalysts. So, whenever a reaction is done uh, via a chiral catalyst then also you can get um, asymmetric induction or um, asymmetric synthesis you can achieve asymmetric synthesis. Okay. So, there are these are the three most important ways either you use already a prefixed a, a, already an attached asymmetric center or you can have a chiral nucleophile uh, or you can have a chiral catalyst or sometimes what happens that if you do if you do not have any asymmetric center, but what you do you temporarily attach a chiral center into it okay. Temp temporarily attach a chiral center in it and then do the reaction then also the transition states will be diastereomeric because of this chirality of this A okay. and then after the reaction once the as a, uh, the asymmetry degree of asymmetry is achieved then you can take this A off and get the original target compounds. Okay. So, that is another way. So, if the starting compound is not chiral you attach some chirality in the molecule and then do the reaction okay, and get the diastereomeric transition states or you can have chiral reagent as I said or you can have chiral catalyst. Okay. Sometimes chiral solvents also can induce asymmetric asymmetry in the reaction. Okay. Now, let us take the cases where there is a carbonyl and the carbonyl is attached to attached to a carbon which is which is having a chiral which is a chiral center. Okay. So, chiral center means there are three groups here and there is a R group here. Now, if you want to do a reaction say a borohydride reduction or a magnesium or uh, RMGX addition methyl magnesium bromide addition then you are passing through a diastereomeric transition state. So, you will get the alcohols if it is borohydride if it is a, a borohydride then you will get an alcohol if it is methyl magnesium bromide then you will get a tertiary alcohol, uh, but 
uh, the question the the fact is that you are going through a diastereomeric transition state because you have a chiral center here which is fixed. Now, there are certain rules which can tell you which compound is going to be obtained in major amount. So, now let us take this is inspect what I am saying. I am taking a carbonyl compound see this is my carbonyl group and there is a group attached any group I can uh, attach suppose uh, carbonyl in one hand there is a symmetric group okay. and the other hand the there is a attachment of a carbon which is chiral because this is red this is white and this is a different group. So, this is a chiral group chiral center is a carbonyl and carbonyl has a other hand. Okay. Now, you are doing a reaction suppose a borohydride addition onto this carbonyl. So, the borohydride has the possibility the hydride can come from this side or hydride can come from this side. The question is which side it will be preferred. Now, there are certain set of rules to, to decide upon that. Okay. What are these set of rules? So, that we will discuss now. Okay. The first is so this is the situation that what I am saying that you have a carbonyl group, but this uh, the rule is uh, very general it could be x uh, could be carbon also that means, you are adding uh, a nucleophile onto a carbon that happens in a Michael type addition C double bond C usually nucleophile does not approach it approaches only when there is another electronegative group further down. So, if it is carbon that means, it is in a in a Michael type addition or if it is oxygen then it is 1 to carbonyl addition addition of a on to what to carbon uh, 1 to carbonyl system or if it is nitrogen then it is addition on the imine. Okay. So, whatever I am talking about the carbonyl the same rule applies for carbon that means, double bond as well as for the imine. Now, let us see what is uh, the problem the problem we are defining is that there is a group which has got a chiral center here stereogenic center that is the common that is the modern name. Now, there, is, there are these two possibilities the nucleophile can come from the top or can come from the bottom. And so, these two phases are no longer enantiotopic they are diastereotopic why because the products the way to do it is that the products uh, obtained from these additions are diastereomers. So, the phases are diastereotopics. Okay or the other way around that if there is a chiral center already attached the phases becomes diastereotopic. Okay. But uh, for, e for easier understanding you can say that the products that are obtained from it are diastereotopic. So, the phases are diastereo are diastereomers. So, the phases are diastereotopic. Okay. If they are enantiomers the products then the phases are enantiotopic, but the same race I uh, concept is still there that means, if this is 1 if this is 2 if this is 3 then that is the that is 1, 2, 3 that means, that goes in a clockwise. So, the top one is the ray and the bottom one is the psi. Okay. So, this is the scenario now. Now, the so question is which phase will be favored that was our problem. So, now let us break down this uh, carbonyl attach the attach the alkyl the groups attached to this carbon. So, our problem is that we have a carbonyl system where this is R do not have any chirality here. But the next other ha, other hand, the next carbon is a chiral, is a chiral carbon. So it has got three additional ligands. Now out of these three ligands, one will be this is now the pure steric, the size, the steric size of this group. So one will be small, another will be medium, and another will be large. Suppose this is the case that there are three groups. So one is small, so this is large. Suppose and suppose the white is the smallest and the red is the the medium one. So, you classify these three groups which are attached to the stereogenic center as large, medium and small. Then you try to figure out that what is the preferred conformation of this molecule. See this is there is this this free rotation happening in this molecule free rotation. So, as the free rotation is happening that means, uh, you it has got different types of conformations. So, which conformation is preferred and according to Cram the conformation that is preferred that will give the 
give the major product that will react in a particular fashion and that will give the major product. So, according to Cram, if I go to the board, according to Cram, this is the simplest the first rule that came out uh, of, of addition to a carbonyl adjacent to a chiral center. Okay. So, according to Cram, that you have a conformation which is most stable is the one where the carbonyl has another group that is R, where the, the next carbon that means the chiral carbon the large group is anti to the carbonyl. So, if that be the case then there will be a small group suppose on the right side depending uh, that of course, depending upon the chirality of that center, but suppose this is the case that it has got a conformation like this S M L or you can have another uh, S M L okay. or depending on the chirality again I say that you can have the other one also R L S here or M there. Okay. But for a particular compound you will have only one, one set I will go through the example. So, the most preferred conformation will be this or this one again I repeat this is start this is that depends on the chirality of the of the stereogenic center whether whether L M S will be anti clockwise or L M S clockwise that depends on the configuration of the chiral center, but this is the preferred conformation where the carbonyl the other way to say the carbonyl is flanked between the small and the medium. Okay. So, once it is fixed like that then the borohydride suppose I am doing a borohydride reduction. So, boron, boron is complex to the oxygen and then it has got the hydride. So, the hydride will now approach the carbonyl from the side of the small R group and it will this the hydride could have approached from the side of the med medium group, but he says according to Cram that this approach is not favored the approach which is favored is the hydride or the nucleophile here hydride is the nucleophile that is the um, that approaches from the side of the smaller group. So, if that happens that means, which will be on this side and hydrogen will be on this side. Okay. So, let us go to this example which is written here uh, in the on the slide. Okay. So, this was my compound and if you try to draw the correct Newman projection uh, keeping the carbonyl flank between the small and the medium, uh, you should not make any mistake which side will be S, which side will be M. So, the way to do it now is the carbonyl is actually the front carbon, okay. front carbon that means, if you look from this side. So, you see the L M S the L M S is in a from this side again I repeat if you look from this side the L M S looks clockwise. Okay. So, whenever you put these groups L M S that should be in a clockwise fashion L M S that means, you are on the correct path. Okay. Again I repeat carbonyl is on the top. So, you have put the carbonyl at the top. So, the L M S while viewing from this side you maintain that whatever the uh, directionality of L M S. So, that that is that is maintained here L M S is like that. So, this is the correct confirmation of this and the carbonyl is flanked between S and M. So, according to Cram now L is anti to the carbonyl. So, now the nucleophile will approach from which side from the side of the smaller group. Okay. So, the from the side of the smaller group. So, this will be now according to Bargi Dunij principle the, the hydride should approach at an angle of 107 degrees. So, it will approach in a an angle like this in an angle like this. So, it approaches from an angle like this. So, if that happens then R goes to the right side. So, this is the nucleophile and sulfur this S M L remain at the same at the same position only when the nucleophile comes from this side the oxygen goes to the uh, the nucleophile comes from this side the R moves to the right side which remains at the same position because it was 107 degree. So, only slight deviation the only slight adjustment this C O bond has to do. So, it is almost at the same position. So, this is which this is M this is S and this is L and that is R. So, now you can 
uh, from the if the nuclear file approaches from this side then the r will be on the left side ok so that is the difference so this is the uh, these are the two diastereomers possible but the major product is the obtained what is uh, when the nucleophile approaches from the side of the small group so this is what is called the classic cram's rule incidentally donald j cram he gave that rule he received nobel prize later on from for some other work not this stereochemistry work uh, there are there are other interpretations other rules which can also explain uh, explain the formation of the of this as the major product and we will end up with this this is the other other model which is called felkin and model in the felkin and model they differ from the cram model in the sense that they, they say that the preferred conformation is not the uh, not the uh, that the carbonyl is flanked between uh, the small and the medium group. Here they say that the large group has to be perpendicular to the carbonyl. So, the large group has to be perpendicular to the carbonyl. So, this is L then and then you have to maintain that what I said from this side L m s is clockwise. So, that you maintain L m s is clockwise. So, this is one configuration, but the large group can be on this side also. So, you rotate by 180 degree bring the large here and the medium here goes there and the small comes here. Now, between these two which one is here it is there is R s uh, interaction where the interaction between R and the s group the small group and here it is R and the medium group. So, obviously, the this one will be the more stable one. So, now the nucleophile will approach from this side opposite to the 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 L group. So, it will it will it will approach from this side and from the side of the small group that means according to the Barge Dunich. So, it comes from an angle of this 107 degree and the product I do not know the product is not written here and the product will be formed if you have to just put the uh, nucleophile here and the which almost at the same position and R goes in the opposite direction. Okay. So, this is what is called Felkin and model. I think next day we will uh, we will do this in a more elaborative fashion. So, according to Cram this is the situation this is the preferred conformation this is Cram model and according to Felkin Felkin and model. So, you have to place this that the carbonyl is this this is R then L is here, M is here and S is there and not the other way. Other way around means L is on this side and then what happens? You have interaction between R and medium. So, L medium and S. So, this interaction will be there. So, that will not be there. So, this is the favored conformation. Now, the nucleophile approaches as per the Barge Dunich trajectory and then carbonyl almost stays here. So, the product that will be obtained is so R will move out now. So, this is OH, this is R, this is the nucleophile and then you have the S, you have the L and you have the M. So, just slight you can just move it a little bit to eclipse all these. So, S is somewhere here ok, somewhere here M is here and L is there. Okay. So, that, that means if you rotate it S will eclipse nucleophile, M will eclipse which and L will eclipse R. It is the same product remind you it is the same product as the cram product, but this is a better approach than the uh, better approach later on uh, this is supported by quantum mechanical calculations. So, now many people prefer the Felkin and model and not the cram model. We will discuss some other systems, uh, some of the tricky systems where the uh, the cram had to extend his uh, his model or felkin also had to extend his model. Uh, earlier model was based on steric size of L, M and S, but later on they found that if one of the groups is a polar group or if one of the groups can form chelate complex with the carbonyl then the whole thing 
falls apart, this model falls apart. So, you have to change the model and accordingly draw the preferred conformation and get the correct product. Okay. So, we will do it that in the next class. Thank you.